Good evening, Middle Georgia. We have a treat for you tonight on WGXA News. That's right, Greg. We are live from the pinkest party on earth. And while there may be a slight chill in the air, that's not stopping the excitement of the 41st International Cherry Blossom Festival. Check out this time-lapse video of the Cherry Blossom Festival's Bloom Camp. This was downtown Macon yesterday as hundreds of people flocked to the city for 10 days of the pinkest party in the world. Now, we are just a few days away from what's considered the peak bloom date of March 23rd. That's when Mr. William Fickling III forecasts that the beautiful trees all across downtown will start to fill out. And a cherry blossom tradition sped back downtown this weekend. The bed races returned to the streets of Macon. And judging by the speed, you might mistake everyone in it for professional athletes who were running. In fact, the competition became so heated the defending champs were unseated. Georgia Power took the championship spot away from the Macon Bib firefighters. And that's not the only race downtown saw. Runners plug their noses for the trash can trot. You could say Ryland Environmental was talking trash coming into its first ever trot, but you should expect no less from the pros. Maybe it was rigged. I don't know. <laughs> Ryland hauled away a first place win. They shared how their work on the job made entering the contest a no-brainer. And our furry friends were the highlight of race day in the wiener dog race. A handful of dachshund dogs put their little legs to work to try and get down the street just as fast as they could. It wasn't much of a competition, though, because one pup was made for a race in the cold. She's four years old. Uh, she loves uh, running after her ball. She loves treats, and she loves her Uncle Tommy right here. <laughs> Uncle Tommy, what does it mean to have chili win? Oh, we, she's... She spoiled us. We, we haven't done much spoiling, but she loves those treats. Jilly's owner and uncle couldn't have been more proud as she showed up and showed out and shut down the competition. Well, Brittany, the fun is really just getting started here tonight, and it couldn't be happening on a better day. Today is the first official day of spring. It sure is. We're bringing in our chief meteorologist, Eric Garlic. Eric, what do Cherry Blossom Festival fans need to be prepared for for a fun night? Hey, Brittany, yeah, one of the things we're going to have to prepare for, at least for the start, is the cold weather. We got more of it on the way. Let's take a look at where the frost advisories and freeze warnings are issued right now, making half below the southern half uh, looking at that frost advisory and then the northern half looking at that freeze warning once again for tonight with temperatures falling down to around freezing. Right now temperatures are in the 50s. It is a little bit breezy out here as you can tell with the flags flying. Uh, just adding a little bit of extra chill in the air but we have a lot of sunshine and things are looking pretty good. Through the rest of the evening if you are headed out here 45 by 10 o'clock so it is going to cool off pretty quickly and then down to around freezing once again tonight but we do have some much warmer weather on the way so one more night that we'll have to worry about frost and freeze and then we'll start to see things improving temperature wise we do have the possibility for some storms we'll talk about when we see that coming up in your full forecast all right eric i can't wait till we're back in the 80s but while there's certainly no shortage of fun and food to be had at the cherry blossom festival tonight's focus brit is on these wonderful trees and more because it's Heroes Day, a tribute to all of our first responders and military service members. Our Carlos Stevens is here right now at the Pinkest Party to join us live and tell us what makes Heroes Day so special. Okay, I mean, we got plenty of time to go look for spots. Yeah, just over by the... Our first responders are always showing us love, so today the Cherry Blossom told, chose to do likewise. And firemen all serve us every single day. But today they'll get to spend some time on duty at the Cherry Blossom with their family, all for free with discounted rides. So, this is for Robbins Air Force Base employees, our local sheriff's office, all over the community. It's not just, you know, here in Macon. We want to honor everyone. Director of Marketing Hannah Theus says this shows our heroes that their sacrifices aren't going unnoticed. We're so thankful for them because they go above and beyond um, and they help us uh, every day here at the festival and so we just wanted to be able to recognize those who just do uh, go above and beyond. 
Thea says first responders aren't the only ones. They're serving at the pinkiest party on earth this week. We're very fortunate because we have several days where we honor those who um, are in our community. Like we have an opportunity on Wednesday for teachers. So we're doing a State of Georgia Employees Day for them as well. And um, we have Seniors Day coming up. Now, Greg and Brittany, I've been told there's a lot of festivities around here today. So I'm going to go find something to do, and I'll holler at you guys a little bit later on in the show. Back to you. <laughs> All right, Carlos, thank you. He's having fun. <laughs> I hear him. <laughs> All right, there's plenty going on tonight and all week long, enough that there should be something for everyone to find fun. That's right. For a look at some of what's going on here at Carolyn Creighton Park, we are joined by our Arena Pluckett. Hey there, Arena. Hey there, Brittany and Greg. For 10 days straight, Carolyn Creighton Park becomes a cotton candy paradise and plastered in pink for the pinkest party on earth. Now, I'm on the merry-go-round right now. These kids have gotten the technique down to hold on tight. Nearly lost my foot in earlier, but that's okay. There are plenty of rides here and fun to be had here at the pinkest party on earth. Now, I just want to give you a scene of what we're seeing right now. You have rides like this one, you have bumper cars, you have Ferris wheel, and my favorite part, Brittany and Greg, you got the food. Y'all know I'm a big girl, so you know I'm going to partake in some of those fried Oreos. I saw funnel cake, so all that and more is coming up, and you want to stick here because you're going to see me in a few kick Carlos Stevens' butt out of game. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> Thank you, Arena. You caught us off guard with that. She did, and I'm jealous that she's where the fried Oreos are. That's where I need to We've be. We've been looking for those, haven't we? Yeah, we I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll stay with us, folks. Coming up, though, it's not all fun and games today as we take a look at what's going on at the state capitol with our Brianna Cook. Also, later on tonight, we check out the special Tasty Cherry Blossom Festival treats that you'll find all over Macon. Stay with us. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gary Thigbin here at All About Animals Rescue Shelter in Macon again. I'm joined with Lisa and Nicole, and guess who we have right now? We have Reese, and I am very partial to larger dogs. He finds my shoes oh interesting. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he does. He smells, up, smells another dog on your shoes. Yeah, he does. But listen, y'all, he is beautiful. He's a Pyrenees mix. He, Pyrenees he really mix. is attached to Gary today. For the he loves me. All <laughs> animals. <does> <laughs> Sweet. Um, and oh, like I said, he's beautiful. He loves people, as you can tell. Oh, yeah. Especially Gary. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't take him. <laughs> he, he's very friendly. And like I said, he, he loves Nicole, too. He is a larger dog. So if you love larger dogs, oh, my gosh. He is perfect. He's absolutely perfect. Yeah, so hey, if you hey, love hey, everybody. If you love a larger dog who is so sweet and loving, <laughs> this is the guy for you, Reese. And oh. Lisa, if somebody Woo. would like to <laughs> adopt okay. Reese, how do they do that? Woo! Give us a <laughs> I'm getting licked. I'm sorry. I love you, sweet baby. He's so Send sweet. us a message all about animals rescue oh. and for this loving, sweet, big baby. Um, <laughs> and let us know you saw him on TV. <laughs> He's made quite an impression, and we will get back with you as soon as possible. All right, let's do that. Let's find Reese a good home, folks. Thank you, Nicole Thank and you. Lisa. Thank you. He's not going to leave you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> the following segment is sponsored by Naki. We really like a sandwich at our house for a snack on the go because we're always running around, but it is the worst when you go to grab the bread and it's stale and it's moldy. This Tupperware bread saver has really helped us out with that. It's so easy to use. It's lightweight. It's got this little divider in it so you can put the divider in and if different people in the house like different types of bread, one goes here, the other goes here, and then you just close it and it's going to keep your bread fresh and that's going to save you money because you don't want to throw away money. Groceries are so expensive right now. This works because it's got this little ventilation on the top 
and it's just the right amount of air. Too much air makes the bread stale and too little is gonna create mold. So this gives you just the right amount. The other thing I like about it, if you have the kids or the grandkids over, like sometimes when we have family, I like to treat us to muffins or bagels. You can put these in a separate compartment. Even if you treat yourself to the good bagels, they stay fresh right there and you just cover it. And it's got this really sleek look and it looks good in any kitchen and it's really lightweight to transport. With this price that you're getting, you could buy a couple and give these to friends as a gift. Right now, we're offering 25% off the Tupperware Bread Saver. This is really a good deal. It's gonna save you money in the long run. Head to asadeals.com for this exclusive offer. Well, over the past years, housing prices and rental prices have taken on a new spotlight, and part of the problem comes from the cost and willingness to build new homes. Now, a middle Georgia lawmaker is pushing forward on a bill that would affect housing in Georgia. Our Brianna Cook has more details on the bill from Atlanta. State Senate committee is expanding a bill that bans lengthy housing moratorium. Uh, provide that a local government cannot have a moratorium on single family housing for longer than 180 days. A state Senate committee on Thursday widened the scope of a bill that would prohibit local governments from imposing moratoriums on the building of housing for longer than 180 days. Passed by the state house earlier this month, the original version of the bill only barred local government moratoriums on single family housing. Fast forward to last Thursday, the Senate Economic Development and Tourism Committee approved an amendment widening the bill to include all housing. Dale Washburn, a Macon representative authored and sponsored the bill, says there are some exceptions to the 180-day rule. There's a state of emergency that is declared by the federal, state, or local government. There is a natural disaster, any kind of health and safety risk that is uh, present in the county, they could extend that. And also any order of any federal, state, or local agency with jurisdiction over the local government if they are ordered to extend. Local governments could also extend moratoriums if they needed more than 180 days to allow the completion of studies of topics such as infrastructure or land use, whether those studies are completed in-house or by a third-party contractor. The bill would also prohibit local governments from continuously reviewing moratoriums and instead require a 180-day break between such moratoriums. Austin Hackley of the Home Builders Association of Georgia says this is a step in the right direction to address the current housing crisis in Georgia. And that small step is to make sure that the roadblocks or the restrictions that home builders run into locally are reasonable and they're transparent. Hackney says the bill is needed because currently there are no restrictions on local governments when it comes to moratoriums. Unfortunately, some local governments are using those development moratoriums to put a hard stop on new housing in their local area in a blanket manner that you know doesn't take into account the different aspects of these different developments. With this bill, local governments would be allowed to waive impact fees for housing that is smaller than 2,500 square feet in order to incentivize construction. Reporting in Atlanta, Brianna Cook, WGXA News. Good evening, I'm Chief Meteorologist Derek Garlick, and we're out here at the 41st Cherry Blossom Festival. It's a little bit on the cool side, but we got a lot of sunshine and unfortunately a little bit of wind to go along with those cool temperatures, making it uh, a little on the chilly side. So one more cold night ahead. We're going to see warm and breezy conditions as we go through the week. And then later this week, we're going to see the potential for some thunderstorms and even the potential for a severe storm or two as we move toward Friday night and into Saturday morning. But we'll give you more information on that as that event gets a little bit closer. Frost advisories and freeze warnings in effect for tonight. Once again, this is going to be our last cold night and we are eventually going to warm up. We'll start to see temperatures about 10 degrees warmer tomorrow. We're at 57 in Macon, Warner Robins at 57, 60 as you head down toward McRae. Those temperatures tomorrow are going to be in the mid 60s, the mid 70s, and then mid 80s by the end of the week. So, so much warmer weather coming our way this evening. We'll see temperatures to 54 at 7 o'clock. By 10 o'clock, looking at 45 
And as we head toward tomorrow morning, you can see those mid 30s showing up. And that's why we have the freeze watch and frost advisory for parts of middle Georgia for tonight. So after one more cold night, we see morning lows well up into the frost and likely category with some lows only into the 60s as we head into uh, the second half of the week. Tomorrow starting off cold, but we warm up quite a bit. 55 by noon, then by four o'clock, we'll see those temperatures up to about 64 degrees and we will see some warmer conditions throughout the week. Let's look at that 10 day temperature trend. How about some 80s? A lot of folks mentioning to me that they missed the 80s. Well, we got 80s back on the board. Thursday, 83, 85 for Saturday, uh, Friday, and then 82 for Saturday into Sunday, and then back into the mid 70s, which is pretty close to average for the end of March and beginning of April. So take a look at our weekend planner. Planning to come out to the Cherry Blossom Festival Friday. Gonna be warm, 85 degrees. On Saturday, we're gonna watch out for those morning showers and thunderstorms, but eventually giving way uh, to some drier air and then another return for some showers late in the day on Sunday will be possible, but temperatures remaining in the 80s all weekend long. As we head into our 10 day forecast, you can see those rain chances coming our way for Friday into Saturday and then into the weekend. Those 70s are gonna stay on the board and we're really not gonna see them go anywhere anytime soon, but another chance for some rain as we head into Thursday and Friday next week. So one more cold night with those temperatures down into the low to mid 30s. And then we really start to see things warming up, gonna feel like spring. Spring, about five minutes away from officially starting the vernal equinox at 524. So uh, we're gonna be dealing with spring conditions as we head into the first full week of spring. Harrison Body Shop Fishing Game Forecast going to be in the excellent category at 2.30 a.m. and 2.40 p.m. So we are going to be dealing with some pretty nice temperatures. Greg, Brittany, we've done a couple of these shows on the road the last couple of days and it's been cold. Just one weekend off. It would have been very warm if we would have done it next weekend. Story yeah. of my life. Yeah, <laughs> I'm counting down the minutes until spring <laughs> is supposed to start. Not 24. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's no secret that Middle Georgia loves cherry blossoms. You can tell by the turnout out here tonight on a Monday. We're showing off some nice treats you can get around town. And Brittany, after the break, the pinkest party on earth would not be the same without a very special pink poodle. Welcome back. There's more turning pink than the trees and flowers. There's no shortage of food and drinks getting a new look. That's right. Uh, Visit Macon says nearly three dozen uh, restaurants and bars are getting in the spirit by adding a cherry blossom themed item to their menus. To make it all a little easier to find, Visit Macon created the Pink Provision Trail on the Tour Macon app. Once you start following the trail, you can use the app to choose your favorite in what is called Drink the Pink Contest. The Drink the Pink Contest is a way to vote for your favorite drinks. Um, inside the app, you'll have a chance to, to rate them, um, one to five stars, and the winner will, will receive a People's Choice Award for Cherry Blossom Festival. Now, while we don't know much about how the spirits taste, Gary Thigpen and I hopped on the trail to taste some of the dishes around town that have gone pink. Our first stop takes us to one of the biz uh, one of Macon's busiest spots. We are stopping by Bear's Den on our food tour for Cherry Blossom Festival. Now we came for the cherry pie, but Miss Christie told us, of course, we could not leave Bear's Den without tasting some of the food that they are most known for. So, Miss Christie, what is the best thing, what would Middle Georgians say the best thing on y'all's menu is? Well, today on Thursday, for sure, they show up for the beef tips and rice. Every day for the fried chicken and chicken tenders. Gary, you want some beef tips? I do. I will take some chicken tenders. Oh, now this is, man, this is my kind of food right here. But this is good. What is cherry blossom? Uh, cherry pie. Cherry pie. We've seen pink drinks and we've seen pink food, but there's another tradition of pink that many Maconites love to see each year. We'll give you a hint. It's on four legs with two floppy ears and one poofy tail. 
Petals the Poodle is the official mascot of the Cherry Blossom Festival, but many Makinites will tell you the character Petals is modeled after the real thing, Cherry. I know. <laughs> Don't eat it. I was told the story that they went to the kids and said, what do you remember from the Cherry Blossom Festival? And they all said, the Pink Poodle, the Pink Poodle. Who can blame them? If Cherry is anything, she's memorable. Well, we call her a diva. A diva. <laughs> <laughs> For the better half of the month of March, Paul and Alice Williams share their girl with the community. She's our dog, and she acts like our dog at home. What a pretty girl. Good girl. It's a tradition they started many years ago with their poodle, Casper. Back then, we would color him red, white, and blue for 4th of July because it would wash right out. You could do him green for St. Patrick's Day. You could do him uh, orange and black for, you know, and but the pink caught on the most. So they kept it going. From Casper, then Lacey, now Cherry and Blossom, who passed away just a few years ago. Strutting around town with their bright pink poodle has become something the local pet groomers look forward to each year. Every once in a while we joke about it and say we might not do it this year, but we were told we would have to move. <laughs> <laughs> and of course no one knows it, but it might be something Cherry looks forward to as well. She knows when we do her nails and put the bows in her hair and reach and pick up the lead, something exciting is going to happen. What a great story, Brittany. I love that. Wasn't that cute? That was awesome. <laughs> well, stay with us, folks. Coming up, the pinkest party on earth has plenty of foodies for you to get excited about. We'll tell you the kind of treats you can find right here at Carolyn Creighton Park, plus the creative ideas local restaurants came up with us. Stay tuned. Good evening, Middle Georgia. We want to welcome you back now to a special treat that we have for you tonight on WGXA News. That's right, Greg. We are live from the pinkest party on earth. And while it might be a slight chill in the air, it's not stopping the excitement of the 41st International Cherry Blossom Festival. We're live from Carolyn Creighton Park tonight as the Cherry Blossom Festival brings some of the fair fun to the mid-state early. And, of course, a big part of that, and my favorite part of that, is the food. <laughs> it certainly is, Brittany. And to tell us more about the taste at Carolyn Creighton Park, we have Eric Garley. Eric, if we can pry you away from taste testing for a bit, what are you recommending tonight? Well, Greg, I've been doing a little bit of testing all day. Of course, you got to try it all. Uh, I had a quesadilla that was pretty good. Um, got some caramel apples. Uh, you know, your typical fair food. You got your cotton candy. But if you pan this way, Thomas, we also have a bunch of other stuff. We got tornado fries. Seems like something a meteorologist should try. So maybe we'll try that. Um, we got some bourbon chicken, Louisiana grill. Um, there's the quesadilla shop that I had. We had roasted corn. Um, we got some pizza. And one of the one of the favorites that we typically see here, we had them last year. I haven't quite got to try them yet this year, uh, but it's on my list of things to do. Is the cinnamon roll? So uh, a lot of things to do. You got your lemonade, um, your typical fair food, and it's really good fair food. Uh, I was I was really surprised. And uh, Thomas, I know, had the bourbon chicken last year. He said he's probably going to hit that up again this year because it uh, it was pretty good. But um, you got your slushies. It's a little bit cold, but later this week when things warm up, uh, probably a nice cool treat to have when we see those temperatures up into the mid 80s. But for now, I'm going to send it back to Greg and Brittany. Greg and Brittany, I know we got to try quite a bit of food last year. Um, what do you remember that you had last year that you really liked? My favorite last year was the cinnamon roll. I already got mine for this year. Take that away from her. I like the roasted corn, and I'm hoping to grab an ear on the way out. So that's yeah, good. Greg is he's keeping a secret from y'all. We also already tasted the bourbon chicken too, yeah, and Thomas delicious. was right. It is delicious. It's kind of in the vein of like a teriyaki chicken. Not really like barbecue, but our Gary Thigpen tasted some barbecue right here in Macon that turned pink for Cherry Blossom Festival. Let's check it out. 
In honor of Cherry Blossom Festival here in Macon, we are visiting restaurants who are putting together some of their best dishes to celebrate Cherry Blossom Festival here in Middle Georgia. Do you want your brisket sliced or chopped? Out the way. That is really good. And we just had to visit Satterfield Barbecue because they claim that they have some of the best barbecue and brisket in town. <laughs> This will be our cherry blossom special, our uh, traditional pulled pork mixed with our cherry cola barbecue sauce, our beet vinegar slaw, which is nice and pink and vibrant, and our pink uh, pickled red onion. Tell us about the buns now. Uh, so the buns I make, um, technically on my day off, <laughs> oh. over at Mill Hill until we get some, uh, some more space over here. So it's uh, my hollow dough recipe that I kind of just translated into buns. So what are you making it? This is going to be our pink slaw for cherry blossom. Some beet vinegar and our creamy slaw mix. A really pre pretty cherry blossom pink slaw. Don't do that, you didn't cook it right. All that beautiful bark, you work that into the meat. You'll get a little bit of sauce. What's what our little of bit of, is we're, it's our sweet sauce, but we added a reduced cherry cola uh -huh. to it just to add some, you know, a fun element, which they've been doing cherry cola barbecue sauce as specials since, for years, probably since they opened. Together, you get a fun little pink sandwich. We're really proud of Middle Georgia. We're really proud of the food that is specifically Middle Georgia. Bold peanuts, Brunswick stew, you know, the way we do our pulled pork. Yeah. Um, so really hoping that like people see this and be like, wow, Satterfields is great. Yeah. And so are the, all these other barbecue spots. Um, and really hoping Macon becomes a food destination. Oh, well, I didn't taste it. Gary said that it was great. There's plenty going on tonight and all week long, enough that there should be something for everyone to have fun. That is certainly true, Brittany. And for a look at some of what's going on here at Carolyn Creighton Park, we're joined by our Arena Plunkett and our Carlos Stevens. Hey, guys. Hey, Greg and Brittany. Oh, my goodness. Talk is cheap, but one thing about me, I don't go back on my word. I said to you oh, really? earlier oh, really? I was going to beat Carlos. Okay. And I want our cameraman, Perry, to zoom in on Carlos' face right now. Because this and you'll here, still still smile. This is the face of a loser. He doesn't know it yet. Okay. Right now. All right. Buddy. All right. All right. Well, you know, Brittany, they weren't the only ones because this weekend was another good time with the uh, cherry blossom tradition coming back. We're talking about the bed races. They returned to the streets of Macon, and judging by the speed, you might mistake everyone in it for professional athletes who were running. In fact, the competition became so heated, the defending champs were unseated. Georgia Power took the championship spot from the Macon Bib Firefighters. Yeah, year. Greg, I was there for that race and they won it by literally one second. Wow. And that's not the only race downtown saw. Runners plug their noses for the trash can trot. You could say Ryland Environmental was talking trash coming into its first ever trot. Now, some may say it was rigged, but you should expect no less from the pros. Ryland hauled away a first place win. Well, our furry friends were the highlight of race day in the wiener dog race. A handful of dachshund dogs put their little legs to work to get down the street the fastest. But it wasn't much of a competition, though, because one pup was made for a race in the cold.
and the winner of that race was Chili. Uh, and Chili's owner and uncle say they couldn't have been more proud as she showed up and showed out in the competition. Yeah, she was super she cute. Was adorable, wasn't she? You know, Macon has coined its celebration the International Cherry Blossom Festival, but another U.S. city has the national version. The nation's capital, Washington, D.C., it has what I think is fair to call the second pinkest party. I was so surprised to see some of the visuals of what people do to these trees, whether it's climbing on them or even, yes, taking a branch to bring home. And so we want to check in on these cherry blossoms this morning because it is windy, it is cold. I'm sure you're worried. I am. And so the good news is they're actually going to be coming in a few days early, possibly according to the National Park Service. They are entering that stage four peduncle elongation over the weekend. We are getting close. So it's the perfect time to go over what not to do as we get ready for the best time of the year. And that starts with staying on the pavement if possible, but definitely a good distance from the those tree trunks. You have to remember that the roots of the cherry trees extend a good way away from the tree, uh, places that you may not be able to see them. All that foot traffic can compact the soil, and the harder the soil gets, the more difficult it is for the roots to draw in nutrients. So for that reason, we ask folks uh, when they can to stay on the walkways. I mean, just check out how many people show up to the festival. It's not one person who's going to compact the soil, but over time it can actually kill the trees if the roots can't pull those nutrients. Another huge don't is touching or even worse, breaking off one of those branches of these blossoms. You are seeing some examples of people doing that now. They're so beautiful and it makes sense you want to touch them, but they're also fragile. So don't be that guy. It is against the rules and you're technically damaging national resources if you do this. Now back out here, you are seeing those cherry blossoms again. And if you would like to be a cherry blossom protector, you can actually sign up, take a pledge and get a badge. There's a new design this year. As your unofficial cherry blossom correspondent, I'm going to say, go ahead and go do that. Just go to the Welcome Center when you head over to the festival. At the Tidal Basin, Joy Wang, back to you. Well, we're stepping away from the fun after the break to deal with some national news that's making headlines. Former President Trump is back in the spotlight as his mounting legal troubles could soon reach new levels. Coming up, a reaction to rumors that Trump might end up in cuffs.
Over the weekend, former President Donald Trump called on his supporters to protest his possible arrest on Tuesday. And since then, demonstrators have started to gather near Trump's Palm Beach estate, Mar-a-Lago. As Victoria DeCardinus reports, the potential indictments are not only getting the attention of his supporters, but also Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. For the last two days, people have been gathering outside of Mar-a-Lago after the former president told his supporters to, quote, take our nation back. Donald Trump has been taking jabs at Manhattan's district attorney, Alvin Bragg, and now Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, is joining in. Just outside of Mar-a-Lago, protesters gathering to show their support for former President Donald Trump as he faces possible indictment and arrest. We're supporting our president. Uh, we stand with Trump because he's the only one standing for us. The Manhattan District Attorney is investigating alleged hush money payments made to adult film star Stormy Daniels on Trump's behalf prior to the 2016 election. Trump telling his supporters on his social media app, Truth Social, that DA Alvin Bragg once said there was no case against him, but now he's pushed to prosecute. And an unlikely supporter agrees. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has stayed tight-lipped about anything relating to the former president, but echoed Trump's thoughts about Bragg on Monday. The Manhattan District Attorney is a Soros-funded prosecutor. And so he, like other Soros-funded prosecutors, they weaponize their office to impose a political agenda on society at the expense of the rule of law and public safety. And without mentioning Trump's name, DeSantis hinted at the allegations Trump is facing. I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star to, to secure silence over some type of alleged affair. I just, I can't speak to that. The Florida governor and former president have been trading jabs ahead of what many expect to be a battle for the Republican nomination for president. Trump supporters say this investigation is just another attempt at trying to keep him out of office. They've been investigated. They investigated him with the Russia hoax. They impeached him over the Ukraine phone calls. They're coming him after with the uh, Georgia election phone call. It's one after investigation after another. And Trump supporters have told us that if the former president is arrested, they will be back out here to protest. In West Palm Beach, Florida, I'm Victoria DeCardinus reporting. And rental prices have taken on a new spotlight. Part of the problem comes from the cost and willingness to build new homes. Now in middle Georgia, lawmakers pushing forward a bill that would affect housing Tonight, our Brianna Cook is at the Capitol to tell us more. State Senate Committee is expanding a bill that bans lengthy housing moratorium. Uh, provide that a local government cannot have a moratorium on single family housing for longer than 180 days. A state Senate committee on Thursday widened the scope of a bill that would prohibit local governments from imposing moratoriums on the building of housing for longer than 180 days. Passed by the state house earlier this month, the original version of the bill only barred local government moratoriums on single family housing. Fast forward to last Thursday, the Senate Economic Development and Tourism Committee approved an amendment widening the bill to include all housing. Dale Washburn, a Macon representative authored and sponsored the bill, says there are some exceptions to the 180-day rule. There's a state of emergency that is declared by the federal, state, or local government. There is a natural disaster, any kind of health and safety risk that is uh, present in the county, they could extend that. And also any order of any federal, state, or local agency with jurisdiction over the local government if they are ordered to extend. Local governments could also extend moratoriums if they needed more than 180 days to allow the completion of studies of topics such as infrastructure or land use, whether those studies are completed in-house or by a third-party contractor. The bill would also prohibit local governments from continuously reviewing moratoriums and instead require a 180-day break between such moratoriums. Austin Hackley of the Home Builders Association of Georgia says this is a step in the right direction to address the current housing crisis in Georgia. And that small step is to make sure that the roadblocks or the restrictions that home builders run into locally are reasonable and they're transparent. Hackney says the bill is needed because currently there are no restrictions on local governments when it comes to moratoriums. Unfortunately, some local governments are using those development moratoriums to put a hard stop on new housing 
in their local area in a blanket manner that you know doesn't take into account the different aspects of these different developments. With this bill, local governments would be allowed to waive impact fees for housing that is smaller than 2,500 square feet in order to incentivize construction. Reporting in Atlanta, Brianna Cook, WGXA News. Good evening, I'm Chief Meteorologist Eric Garlick, and uh, we're out here at the 41st Cherry Blossom Festival. Uh, we're a little bit closer to the rides and uh, a little bit further away from the food. Had to walk off all of that good food that we had. Uh, we're actually right here next to Jurassic Kingdom, and uh, it's just starting to wrap up. But um, pretty cool little feature here. It's a pretty uh, realistic looking dinosaurs. Uh, let's take a look at what we can expect as we go through the next several days. So we got one more cold night with temperatures down into the low 30s, mid 30s, frost advisories and freeze warnings issued out across middle Georgia once again. And we're going to continue to see that cold air tomorrow with below average temperatures. But then we see those temps back into the 70s and then eventually even into the 80s as we go into the weekend. But here's a look at those uh, cold alerts. So frost advisories for the areas in light blue, areas in purple underneath that freeze warning. That's where temperatures will fall to 32 degrees or colder through the overnight period. So that'll go until tomorrow morning. Right now we're still looking at temperatures in the 50s and we will see those temperatures down into the low 30s as we go through the night. So big changes ahead uh, before the evening. 45 degrees by 10 o'clock. So we'll lose the little bit of heat that we did have today pretty quickly. Clear skies and uh, cold air mass in place of us bringing in those cooler temperatures but we will see uh, another frost and freeze possible tonight and then really transition into the frost unlikely category as we go through the next uh, week or so overnight lows only down into the 60s big changes from where we've been the last three or four days really the last week or so with those below average temperatures tomorrow 85 uh, 35 degrees at 8 a.m., noon 55, and then 64 degrees at 4 o'clock. So some big changes ahead. Now we will see our temperatures warming up. As I mentioned, 66 tomorrow, 76 as we move toward Wednesday, and then 80s by Thursday. And we'll see those 80s continuing into the weekend with those temperatures bottoming out at uh, the high end at 73 degrees on our Tuesday. So some warmer weather and then more seasonable weather coming our way for the next week or so. We are going to see those uh, temperatures continuing to be warm as we head into the weekend. So this week looking pretty good for Cherry Blossom Festival. Now the only time we will see some rain or even some storms, that's going to be Friday night into Saturday. And can't rule out a few severe storms at this point, um, but we will be watching for that over the upcoming days. We'll get you more information as that event gets a little bit closer, but that'll be kind of the timing for those rain and storms. But other than that, uh, rain chance is pretty low over the next week or so. Here's that 10 day forecast looking at 76 degrees on Wednesday, then 80s, and then eventually back into the 70s. But our average high this time of year is in the low 70s. So we'll be pretty close to average and we will see some much warmer weather than what we've been seeing the last couple of weeks. And uh, I know that's a welcome sight for a lot of us. Let's take a look at your Harrison Body Shop Fish and Game Forecast. Going to be in the excellent category at 2.20 a.m. and at 2.40 p.m. Now, Greg, Brittany, you guys were out with me this weekend with the uh, cold events. It's still cold, but it's a lot better than it was. A lot better is an understatement. <laughs> yes, it is. A lot better because we were really freezing in Dublin. It was on very Sunday, cold we? in Dublin. <laughs> and I remember it. Now, last year we were here live at the Cherry Blossom Festival. It was a lot warmer. Yes. But it's not too bad today. It's in not fact, that I bad. Think we all had short sleeves last we year. We did. Yeah. yeah. Sunglasses. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was a lot warmer. That's okay, though. <laughs> we're wrapping our night up right after the break. But before we go, we have one last look at where you can get a special taste of the Cherry Blossom Festival. The next stop on our Cherry Blossom food tour is here at Loom inside of Hotel 45. I'm sitting in front of a filet with a Cherry Blossom twist, but before I dive into it, let me introduce you to the chef and how he made it. The Cherry Blossom to me is just a fun event for families, for the whole community. It brings a lot of tourist dollars into this town. 
and it's just, it's just a great way to, to, to kick off the spring. I am doing a three course menu. The entree choice is a roasted garlic potato puree with rainbow carrots topped with a hand cut eight ounce filet and a pink peppercorn sauce. And it's really good. Brittany, I am so jealous you've gotten all these assignments <laughs> to test out the food. I bet that was delicious. It was delicious. You absolutely should be jealous. You know, Gary and I, we picked the restaurants right from Visit Macon's uh, Provisions Trail. So, um, it was great. And I'll tell you about that steak. You know, yeah. the peppercorn sauce on it was pink, so it made you think it was going to taste fruity, ah. but it was still savory. So it was a super creative thing that the chef did to turn something that's very traditional, you know, steak and potatoes, into like yeah. a pink themed dish. And we were talking in the newsroom, so many of our restaurants have gotten into spirit by making these pink themes that will really surprise you, creative things you never thought could turn pink. Yeah. For the Cherry Blossom Festival this week, folks the weekend turned yep. pink just for you so you got to check it out yeah yeah i'm sad i missed out on the cherry ice cream this morning we were working on finishing up the show and i didn't get to get any <laughs> so that sucks but i'm okay because i got my cinnamon roll and so we're gonna have to watch each other on the way out because we want to stop at all the food spots don't we? <laughs> yeah absolutely well, we want to thank all of you for joining us for this special edition of wgxa news on the road we invite you back to join us here tonight at 10 have a great night Hey, good evening, Middle Georgia. We have a special treat for you tonight on WGXA News. That's right, Greg. We are live from the pinkest party on earth. And while there may be a slight chill in the air and it's getting chillier as the sun goes down, yes, that's not stopping the excitement of the 41st International Cherry Blossom Festival. Hey, check out this time-lapse video of the Cherry Blossom Festival's Bloom Cam. This was downtown Macon yesterday as hundreds of people flock to the city for 10 days of the pinkest party in the world. Now, we're just a few days away from what's considered the peak bloom date of March 23rd. That's when William Fickling III forecasts that the beautiful trees all across downtown will start to fill out. And you know, the fun got started this weekend, Brittany. A cherry blossom tradition sped back downtown this weekend. The bed races. So I think that we're going from the bed races then to our next story which is we had the trash can trot, I believe. Oh, the trash can trot. So not that was one of the races that happened downtown. Runners plug their noses for that one. You could say Rydland Environmental was talking trash going into their first ever trot. Now, some would say it's rigged, but I guess you can expect no less from the pros. Rydland hauled away a first place win. Our furry friends were the highlight of race day in the winter, wiener dog race, a handful of dachshund dogs. They put on their little legs to the work and to the test as they went down the street to see who could be the fastest. But it wasn't much of a competition, though, because uh, one pup, it seems, was made for a race in the cold. Chili is four years old. Uh, she loves uh, running after her ball. She loves treats and she loves her Uncle Tommy right here. <laughs> Uncle Tommy, what does it mean to have Chili win? Oh, we she's she spoiled us. We we haven't done much spoiling, but she loves those treats. Chili's owner and uncle couldn't have been more proud as she showed up and showed out for that competition. And you know, Brittany, the fun is just really getting started here tonight, and it couldn't be happening on a better day. Today is the first official day of spring now. Right. I think we're just about 30 minutes away from yes. when it started. So spring started about 30 minutes yes. ago. I think I'm right. We're going to bring in Chief Meteorologist Eric Garlic. Eric, what do Cherry Blossom Festival fans need to prepare to – how do they need to prepare for a night of fun? Well, Brittany, you called it 524 was the official start of spring, and we are going to be looking at spring-like, even late spring-like weather as we go through the week. So big changes ahead for our weather. Let's take a look at what we got going on tonight, though. Uh, frost advisory and freeze warning once again across middle Georgia 
This will be the last night for this that we talk about, at least for the next week or so. We got some much warmer weather coming our way. Our temperatures right now in the 50s and even 160 as we get through the rest of the evening. Temperatures down to about 45 degrees by 10 o'clock. And we will see more cold weather coming our way tonight. Much warmer later this week. We'll talk about just how warm we get and when we could see some thunderstorms in your full forecast. All right, I am all about the warm weather. Me too, Brittany. Yeah, need it now. <laughs> While there's no, no shortage of fun and food to be had at the Cherry Blossom Festival. Yes, there's none at all. Tonight's focus may be on the wonderful trees, but it's also Heroes Day, a tribute to our first responders and those in the military. Yeah, our Carlos Stevens joins us now live at the Pinkest Party to show us what makes those heroes so special. Second from this exact moment. Brittany and Greg, as you know, our first responders are always showing us love when we need it. So in return, the Cherry Blossom is doing the same. Military members, police, EMS, and firemen all serve us every single day. But today they'll get to spend some time on duty at the Cherry Blossom with their family. All for free with discounted rides. So this is for Robbins Air Force Base employees, our local sheriff's office, all over the community. It's not just, you know, here in Macon. We want to honor everyone. Director of Marketing Hannah Thea says this shows our heroes that their sacrifices aren't going unnoticed. We're so thankful for them because they go above and beyond um, and they help us uh, every day here at the festival. And so we just wanted to be able to recognize those who just do uh, go above and beyond. Thea says first responders aren't the only ones they're serving at the pinkiest party on earth this week. We're very fortunate because we have several days where we honor those who um, are in our community. Like we have an opportunity on Wednesday for teachers. So we're doing a State of Georgia Employees Day for them as well. And um, we have Seniors Day coming up. Now it's also important to add that there will be several local performers here tonight if you're looking for something to do. Reporting live here at the Cherry Blossom, I'm Carlos Stevens, Brittany and Greg, back to you. All right, thank you, Carlos. We appreciate that very much. There's plenty going on tonight and all week long, enough that there should be something fun for everyone, Brittany. And for a look at what's going on right here at Carolyn and Crankin Park, we are joined by our Arena Plunkett. What are you getting into, Arena? Greg, Brittany, I'm having so much fun up here. I just want to recap to what happened. We're going to try to forget me losing to Carlos Stevens. That game was rigged. This one isn't. This is a beautiful ride that we're on. We're on the Ferris wheel. You can see all of the rides and attractions and just getting this look around at the Cherry Blossom Festival. It's not hard to see exactly why the Cherry Blossom Festival is the top 20 in the South in the top 50 in the U.S. You have rides. You have food. I just saw some fried Oreos that I know I'm going to dig into after this. Y'all, I I have to say I am not I'm not a sore loser. I am. But this ride right now, Perry, my photographer was saying that I'm being a big baby on this as well. <laughs> but I'm so scared. Hopefully you guys have uh, a little bit more confidence and a little bit more bravery than me as you try out all the rides here at the Cherry Blossom Festival. There's so much to see, so much to experience, so make sure to bring out your friends and family at the 41st Annual Cherry Blossom Festival. For now, though, reporting live in Macon, Irena Plunkett, WGXA News. Arena, if you say that you didn't lose to Carlos Stevens and it didn't happen, baby girl, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And having to put up with Perry, we she has our, our sympathy because that Perry, he, I can hear him saying, you're just afraid to do it. So yeah, it would be yeah. Safe. Don't listen to him, girl. <laughs> That's right. And if you find the fried Oreos, you know where to find yes, me. Yes, and me too. Don't forget. <laughs> okay, there's more turning pink than the trees and the flowers. There's no shortage of food and drinks getting a new look. Visit Macon says there's nearly three dozen restaurants and bars getting in the spirit by adding a cherry blossom themed item to their menu. To make it all easier to find, Visit Macon created the pink provision trail on the Tour Macon app. Once you start following the trail, you can use the app to choose your favorite drink and what's called the Drink the Pink Contest. The Drink the Pink Contest is a way to vote for your favorite drinks. Um, inside the app, you'll have a chance to, to rate them, um, one to five stars. 
and the winner will, will receive a People's Choice Award for Cherry Blossom Festival. Now, while we can't comment on how the spirits taste, <laughs> Gary Thinkman and I hopped on the trail to taste some of the dishes around town that have gone pink, and our first stop took us to one of Macon's busiest spots. We are stopping by Bear's Den on our food tour for Cherry Blossom Festival. Now, we came for the cherry pie. But Miss Christie told us, of course, we could not leave Bear's Den without tasting some of the food that they are most known for. So, Miss Christie, what is the best thing, what would Middle Georgians say the best thing on y'all's menu is? Well, today on Thursday, for sure, they show up for the beef tips and rice. Every day for the fried chicken and chicken tenders. Gary, you want some beef tips? I do. I will take some chicken tenders. Oh, now this is, man, this is my kind of food right here. But this is good. What is cherry blossom? Uh, cherry pie. Cherry pie. <laughs> well, it's no secret that Middle Georgia loves the cherry blossoms. Just look at the turnout here tonight. And we're showing off some nice treats that you can get around town as well. And after the break, the pinkest party on earth wouldn't be the same without a very pink poodle. <laughs> Middle Georgia, we're proud to bring you this special treat tonight as WGXA News is on the road. That's right. We are live from the pinkest party on earth, and we are having a great time. We're seeing games. We're seeing smiling faces, and we are seeing food. Yes, we we're are. live from the Cherry Blossom Festival again, bringing you some of the fair fun to the Mid-State early this year. And we got to see some of the food, right? We sure do, Brittany. And to tell us about the taste here at Carolyn Creighton Park, we have meteorologist Eric Garlic. And Eric, if we can pry you away from the taste testing for a bit, buddy, what are you recommending tonight? Well, Greg, it's always a tough job when you have to taste food for work. Now, I prefer not to eat it on air in front of you guys. I all eat in the privacy of my, my own home. Uh, but we do have a lot of food out here. So you have your caramel apples, you have your uh, cotton candy, you have your lemonade. We have a Georgia staple behind us. Thomas, if you just want to pan this way, it, uh, you can see where the boiled peanuts are getting boiled. So uh, quite a few peanuts to go through. Uh, always a good choice as well. And we have a ton of options from roasted corn to margaritas for the adults. Uh, we have quesadillas. We have some apple crisp, apple pie, apple dumplings, uh, all of that stuff. And then one of the favorites of the Fox 44 ABC 16 crew last year was the cinnamon rolls. And I know Brittany has some cinnamon rolls with her right now. And uh, <laughs> they are definitely one of her favorites. But we also got some unique pizza. Uh, that's probably where I'm headed next. Get a little uh, piece of pizza, uh, kind of get that dinner. We had lunch down here. Now we got to have dinner, right? But yeah, a lot of good things to eat, drink, and uh, a lot of fun to be had. But that's not the only thing uh, this week where you can get some special Cherry Blossom Festival treats. And uh, we got to talk to Gary Thinkpin about some barbecue that he tasted that's made specially for the Cherry Blossom Festival this year. In honor of Cherry Blossom Festival here in Macon, we are visiting restaurants who are putting together some of their best dishes to celebrate Cherry Blossom Festival here in Middle Georgia. Do you want your brisket sliced or chopped? Not the way. That is really good. And we just had to visit Satterfield Barbecue because they claim that they have some of the best barbecue and brisket in town. <laughs> this will be our Cherry Blossom special, our uh, traditional pulled pork mixed with our Cherry Cola barbecue sauce our beet vinegar slaw, which is nice and pink and vibrant, and our pink uh, pickled red onion. Tell us about the buns now. Uh, so the buns I make um, technically on my day off <laughs> oh. over at Mill Hill until we get some, uh, some more space over here. So it's uh, my hollow dough recipe. 
that I kind of just translated it into buns. So what are you making here? This is gonna be our pink slaw for cherry blossom. Some beet vinegar and our creamy slaw mix. A really pre pretty cherry blossom pink slaw. Don't do that, you didn't cook it right. All that beautiful bark, you work that into the meat. You'll get a little bit of sauce. What's what our little bit of, of we're, it's our sweet sauce, but we added a reduced cherry cola uh -huh. to it just to add some, you know, a fun element, which they've been doing cherry cola barbecue sauce as specials since for years, probably since they opened. Together, you get a fun little pink sandwich. We're really proud of Middle Georgia. We're really proud of the food that is specifically Middle Georgia. Boiled peanuts, Brunswick stew, you know, the way we do our pulled pork. Yeah. Um, so really hoping that like people see this and be like, wow, Satterfields is great. Yeah. And so are the, all these other barbecue spots. Um, and really hoping Macon becomes a food destination. And even after having a bunch of food all day, that still sounds amazing. What doesn't sound amazing though is another cold night and we're going to be dealing with some cold temperatures once again tonight. We will see warm and breezy conditions start to work in as we head through the week. And then we have the potential for some storms as we head Friday night into Saturday. Even one or two severe storms will be possible. Taking a look at our freeze warnings and frost advisories issued tonight. Areas in purple underneath that freeze warning. Areas in blue underneath that frost advisory. Temperatures back down into the low to mid 30s once again tonight. Right now, temperatures sitting in the low to mid 50s. We have uh, some 55s, uh, 58 making. 54 in Abbeville, it's still 60 degrees in McCray. So uh, temperatures cool, but not unbearable. Uh, you can get out and enjoy things with those temperatures the way they are. Taking a look at that evening forecast, you can see those temperatures down to about 45 degrees at 10 o'clock tonight, and then down into the 30s as we head toward tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. looking at 35 degrees before that sun comes up. Likely see those temperatures dip right around the 32 degree mark for us here in Macon. So overnight tonight, temperatures back into the frost freeze category and then we really start to see things warming up we have some 60s for overnight lows later this week now our highs were struggled to make it into the 60s over the last couple of days so a uh, big difference coming our way by the end of the week for tomorrow we'll wake up temperatures in the mid 30s up to about 55 by noon and then by four o'clock looking at 64 degrees so some big changes coming our way really starting tomorrow with a big temperature swing and then tomorrow night temperatures not going to be too bad through the overnight period. We will see those temperatures up into the mid to upper 80s as we head toward Thursday and Friday. It's being a little conservative with these temperatures right now. We might have to bump those up a couple more degrees as Thursday and Friday gets a little bit closer. Now we will be battling some wind, but we'll definitely take the warm temperatures with the wind rather than cold temperatures and wind. How about this weekend? If you're heading out to Cherry Blossom, 85 degrees on Friday, Saturday 82, 81 degrees as you head towards Sunday. Now, Friday night into Saturday, we're going to have the potential for some thunderstorms. Uh, one or two could be severe at this point. Some ingredients starting to uh, show up and uh, be possible as we move toward Friday night into Saturday. Still a long way away from that event. Make sure you check back for updates on the forecast and we'll continue to keep you updated with those. That 10 day forecast though, looking a lot warmer. If you like the warm temperatures, you're going to like this 10 day forecast. 76 degrees on Wednesday, Thursday, 83, 85 for Friday, and we'll stay in the 80s as we move toward the weekend. But again, those rain chances Friday night into Saturday. And then once again, as we headed to Monday and Tuesday of next week, watching another system coming our way. Much more seasonable in terms of temperatures for this time of year, starting with Wednesday. So another cool day tomorrow with those temperatures up in the mid 60s, but we'll take mid 60s versus low to mid 50s and uh, some of us not even into the 50s as we went into the weekend. So let's take a look at your Harrison Body Shop fishing game forecast. You can see those temperatures. Uh, here's Body Shop fishing game conditions in the excellent category at 2.20 a.m. and 2.40 p.m. Let's get a look at your weather window. Weather window presented by the National Weather Desk. First day is spring, but that's grapple falling in South Carolina Monday morning. Grapple forms when super cooled water droplets freeze onto snowflakes. It feels like soft hail. Why did the elk cross the road to return to their mountain home? 
Utah's Division of Wildlife Resources led the 80 head of elk across Interstate 80 Sunday morning. The relocation from the Salt Lake Valley into the mountains went off without a hitch. For more content like this, follow the National Weather Desk on TikTok. Well, we've seen pink drinks and pink food, but there's another tradition of pink that many Makinites love to see each year. I will give you a hint. It's on four legs <laughs> with two floppy ears and one poofy tail. Petals the Poodle is the official mascot of the Cherry Blossom Festival, but many Makinites will tell you the character Petals is modeled after the real thing, Cherry. I know. <laughs> Don't eat it. I was told the story that they went to the kids and said, what do you remember from the Cherry Blossom Festival? And they all said, the Pink Poodle, the Pink Poodle. Who can blame them? If Cherry is anything, she's memorable. Well, we call her Adipa. <laughs> For the better half of the month of March, Paul and Alice Williams share their girl with the community. She's our dog and she acts like our dog at home. What a pretty girl. Good girl. It's a tradition they started many years ago with their poodle, Casper. Back then, we would color him red, white, and blue for 4th of July because it would wash right out. You could do him green for St. Patrick's Day. You could do him uh, orange and black for, you know, and but the pink caught on the most. So they kept it going. From Casper, then Lacey, now Cherry and Blossom, who passed away just a few years ago. Strutting around town with their bright pink poodle has become something the local pet groomers look forward to each year. Every once in a while we joke about it and say we might not do it this year, but we were told we would have to move. <laughs> <laughs> and of course no one knows it, but it might be something Cherry looks forward to as well. She knows when we do her nails and put the bows in her hair and reach and pick up the lead, something exciting is going to happen. I just think she is too cute She's with her painted cool. nails, she a diva. But really <laughs> <laughs> well, we're wrapping up our night out after the break. But before we go, we have one last look at where you can get a special taste of the Cherry Blossom Festival. The next stop on our Cherry Blossom food tour is here at Loom inside of Hotel 45. I'm sitting in front of a filet with a Cherry Blossom twist, but before I dive into it, let me introduce you to the chef and how he made it. The Cherry Blossom to me is just a fun event for families, for the whole community. It brings a lot of tourist dollars into this town, and it's just a great way to, to, to kick off the spring. I am doing a three course menu. The entree choice is a roasted garlic potato puree with rainbow carrots topped with a hand cut eight ounce filet and a pink peppercorn sauce. It is really good. And you tell me, Brittany, it is really good. It was really good. All of the food we tasted from um, Loom, the Bears Den, yes. and Satterfields, all of it was really good. I didn't taste Satterfield, but Gary said that it was great, and I believe him because he knows his barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's so many great options here for food, for fun. The Cherry Blossom Festival, I mean, it's underway. Even the, even though it's the first day of spring now officially, yeah. it's a chill in the air, but it's not stopping people from coming out and having a great time. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. The music, the people. I 
I hate to go back to the food, but that's my favorite part. Me I've too. already we'll got my on. cinnamon roll. Oh, Brittany is so <laughs> proud. We got her cinnamon roll before we started to reserve your cinnamon roll. That makes me happy. <laughs> I might <laughs> grab a candy apple on the way out, but don't tell anybody. Oh, just keep that just, between, just between yeah. all of us. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>